Welcome back. This should be quite a short step. We're just going to play around with the lighting a little bit and also fix some dodgy shadows that have been bothering me for a while. So I'm just going to show you where it is in mind. You may or may not have an instance of this, but I know that I have. So over here, there's light bleeding through. And that's because the cliff meshes, a lot of them are just one sided. So a light can shine through the back and we don't want that. And we've kind of also got the issue with the landscape material as well, possibly doing the same thing. So we're going to fix that. We're going to start with getting one of the cliff material sorts. So I'm just going to click on any one of the cliffs. And then I can see here that I have the material for it, which I'll double click. Now, because this has come from Fab, it's set up slightly differently. And it's what we call a material instance. That's what this MI means in the file name. And that means it's got a parent. But that's good because it means we can change this on the parent and it should update for all of the cliffs at once. So what I'm going to do is double click on the parent. And this is what this material looks like. It's very colourful. I like it. But the only bit that I'm interested in is in the details panel where it says two sided. I'm going to check that box. And let me just make sure you can see this when I do it. This is not going to fix it completely, but you can see this lighting area here. If I now save this, that's updated. Now there's less light bleeding through because they're now two sided. I'm going to do the same with the landscape material and see if that helps there. So there's my landscape. Let's open the landscape material and we're going to check the box for two sided. And again, I just want to be able to see when I save this to see if it does anything. And there it is, that's blocked that off. So now light can't pass through the other side of these polygons, which is really good. So that means that the lighting and the shadows are going to be a lot more even. So that does that. The next bit is to just make the lighting look nice. By default, we've just had this directional light as it is. Uh, and we've had no control over it. So we're going to change the direction of it. And that will also change the color of it. And the way that we do that is if you hold Control and L on your keyboard at the same time, you can see that manipulator has just popped up on my screen. And if I now mouse around, that's going to change where the sun is. And if I go far enough down, you'll see that the color of the clouds changes as well. And you can really change the mood of your scene by doing that. So I'm going to bring mine up to about here because I think that makes it look quite interesting. I quite like the shadows up here. You can put it wherever the hell you want. This is just where I'm putting mine. There's no right or wrong answers here. I just want it to look cool. So that's how we do that. You can also, if you choose to, change the temperature of the light to do that in my outliner i'm just going to click on the directional light and we've got light color and also temperature so if i wanted to drag this to the left or right you can see that this changes how warm or cool the light is so i can do that and that makes it look a lot warmer i'll just undo that you see that's how it looks naturally if i take that down to about 4500 everything looks a lot warmer and I quite like that. So that's what I'm going to do with mine. I'm going to leave it about there. I might just do control and L again and just find a light angle that I like. Okay, so I can't see what I'm looking at there. So let's. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That looks really good. Perfect. So that's our lighting done. We're not going to do much else with it. There are other settings if you want to explore them. You can change the intensity. You can change the light color. But I don't want to do any of that. I just wanted to show you quickly how we do that. You could also, if you wanted to, not have it cast shadows, for instance. But I don't know why you would want to do that. But that's just there for you to explore, should you choose to. And that almost wraps up chapter six of this Unreal Engine course. We've now created a very beautiful looking exterior level ready for some more gameplay. However, in the next step, I'm going to set you a couple of challenges just to make sure you've learned something. So I will see you in the next step for that. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.